Hi everyone, I'm Renee and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a gum paste anemone flower. This is one of my favorite flowers to make and use on cakes because they're really easy and quick to come together and I love the soft vintage feel they have. This video is also part of a special flower themed Mother's Day collaboration with some of my dessert network friends. I'll have links in the description box below and at the end of this video so you can check out all of these Mother's Day projects. The first step is to make the centers. First, put a hook in the end of a paper covered 24 gauge wire, and I like to use lengths of about four to five inches, and you want to kind of close off the hook. Then roll black colored gum paste into about a half inch ball. Dip the hooked end of the wire into egg white or gum glue and insert it into the black gum paste. Pinch off the bottom, trying to maintain the round shape, and you're going to taper this down to the wire, pinching off any excess. Now you can finish off the center one of two ways, and I use both depending on what look I'm aiming for. The simplest way is to just take a toothpick or a needle tool and poke a bunch of holes in the top of the gum paste just to give it some texture. But the way to make them look more realistic and what I tend to do more often is to brush the dried center with some egg white or gum glue. Then coat it with some gelatin that's been colored with black petal dust. If you don't want to use gelatin, you could also use a fine ground grain like cornmeal for the same look. And this gives a more realistic texture to the center. Then just make sure you let this dry completely. Next, we form the petals. Now I always use my Cell Cakes Groove Board when I'm making wired flowers but I always get asked if there's a way to make them without this board. So I will show you um, a technique that you can use if you want to make these flowers but don't have the cell cakes board. I'm just rolling out my gum paste fairly thin. Another question I'm asked often is what is my preferred brand of gum paste? And I actually prefer to make my own. I use Nicholas Lodge's gum paste recipe and he has that posted here on YouTube so I will have a link to that in the description box as well. Once your gum paste is rolled out flip it vein side up on your cutting surface. For this first method I'm using the largest petal shape from a petal craft cutter set for an anemone flower and you want to cut out 10 petals for each flower. The vein should be going about halfway to one third of the way up. This is actually the first time I've used this cutter set. Typically, I just use a teardrop cutter to make this flower, and in the next method, when I show you how to make these petals without a groove board, I'll show you exactly what cutter I usually use. As I said, you'll need 10 petals for each flower, and I just make all of the petals the same size. Now we'll insert wires into the petals. I have lengths of about five inches of 24 or 26 gauge paper covered wire, my egg white or gum glue, and I have this veiner from the Petal Craft set. But what I typically use is actually a peony veiner. This bottom blue piece is from First Impressions Molds. And at the time they only had the bottom piece, so I made the top out of Amazing Mold Putty, but you can actually purchase a two piece set at this point. For this first method, I'm just gonna stick with the Petal Craft set and use the Petal Craft veiner. Dip the end of your wire in the egg white and then using your fingers to help feel where the placement is, you want to push the wire about a third of the way up the petal. Then pinch the end and taper it down to the wire for a secure joint. Then lay your petal down on your veiner and press down to emboss the veining impression. Then on a foam pad with the back of the petal facing up, 
use the end of a cell pin or a large ball tool to soften the edges and lightly ruffle the petal. Then we'll set the petals to dry using an apple tray with the front of the petal face up so it has a gentle inward curve. Now as I said, you can make these flowers without your groove board. You just roll out your gum paste a little bit thicker than you normally would for a petal. Then for the cutter, I use the smallest from a six piece Atiko teardrop cutter set and I just pull on the widest part a little bit and pinch the top so it has a slight point to it and cut out your 10 petals. Rubbing the bottom of the cutter on your fingers helps to clean up the edges. As you can see, the petal is just a little bit thicker than I would normally use. To attach the wire, I like to give a little crease to give myself a guide and I pinch that about a quarter to a third of the way up. Coat the end of your wire in your egg white or gum glue and then lay it into the little channel we created and pinch the gum paste up around the wire while using your thumb to open up the petal in this way you have a little channel. Lay your petal into your veiner and this time I'm using the peony veiner so you can see the difference between the two types and also because this texture will disguise the wire a little bit better. Just like the other petals, you're gonna use your cell pin or ball tool to soften and ruffle the edges and set your petals in an apple tray to dry in a cupped shape. Next, we'll move on to coloring the petals. For the petals we created using the groove board, I'm using this French lilac color by Crystal Colors. And for this flower, I'm going to concentrate the color at the base blending it outwards towards the edge, but leaving the edge white. So the color, I'm gonna bring it up about halfway to three quarters of the way up the petal. Anemone flowers come in a huge array of colors in beautiful shades of pinks, purples, deep blues and reds, and of course, a classic white that's often used in wedding arrangements. This basic flower shape also lends itself really well to making fantasy type flowers if you just need something special for a cake. For the petals we made without using the groove board, I'm using this majestic purple petal dust by Crystal Colors. It's a really beautiful, deep bluish purple. And for this flower, I want to make a variety where the center of the flower, the inner parts of the petals is still white, which I think is really beautiful. So I'm starting where I want the white to end and pulling the color away versus starting at the edge of the petal and sweeping inward. And that way I can keep the white parts nice and crisp. Anemone flowers could also be just a uniform color throughout, but I thought that for this video, I would show you these two more interesting color patterns. This color pattern can be a little bit more fussy because you have to be so careful not to get color where you don't want it. But I think when you see the finished flower, you'll agree that it's such a striking and beautiful flower. It's definitely worth just a little bit more care taken. Now, although it's not necessary because the back of the petal will rarely be seen, if you want, you can just dust a little bit of that color from the outer edge stroking inwards. And that's the petal finished. We're almost done, now we can assemble. I prefer to use pre-made stamens, although you could use thread, and they come in this little bundle that has two sides. So from each bundle, you can make two flowers. Just use floral tape and wrap very tightly around the center and cut with 
a big pair of scissors and you end up with your two little bundles. Now in this video I'm using brown floral tape because it's what I had on hand but you could use green or white it doesn't really matter because it won't be seen. Now that dried center that we made I'm going to wrap just a little bit of the floral tape around the base of the wire as well. This will help it stick firmly into our stamen bundle which you will then just use your fingers to spread open so that you have a fairly even little ring of stamens. Then insert the wire of the center through the center of the stamen ring and pull it down tightly. The floral tape that we put on there is going to help it hold really snug into that bundle of stamens. If you really prefer you can also just wrap a little bit more floral tape around the base to for extra security. I don't think it's necessary, at least not for this one. Now we'll attach the petals, giving each one a slight bend backwards. We're gonna have two rows of five, so attach your first row of five evenly around the stamen center. As I'm bending the petals backwards, you'll notice that I'm going from the base using my finger behind it to support it because the petals are so delicate you wouldn't want to break them. The wire inside gives it a little bit more strength and so that's the area you want to press on when you're bending the petal. Once the first row of five is added, it's helpful to tape down a little bit just so that they stay in place. Then you'll add your second row of five going in between that, the petals on that first row. Once all the petals are added, just tape all the way down to create a single stem and that's it for our first flower. And the other type of petal is assembled the exact same way. I hope showing you two methods in one video wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to clear things up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to check out the other videos from this collaboration for other clever ways to surprise mom with flowers for Mother's Day, whether it's a cake decoration or a cookie. You can click on the images on screen now or find links in the description box below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos.